Scenes from the Freedom Inn's Thanksgiving feast. As you may know, it's a tradition for senior officers to serve the troops at holiday meals. This year, General Paul Nakasone, Director of NSA and Commander U.S. Cyber Command, pitched in. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, a look inside the construction at Mead High. German-Italian POWs remembered, and it's the season for giving. These stories and more, but first this traffic note from the Fort Meade Police Department. The far right outbound lane at the Rockenbach Gate is now closed from 6.30 to 9 o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday for the duration of the school year. The move is being made to ensure the safety of children walking to MacArthur Middle School. Once again, the far right outbound lane is closed weekdays from 6.30 to 9 a.m. for the duration of the school year. In more school news, Mead High is currently undergoing a more than $100 million renovation and expansion. Recently, the Fort Meade Garrison Command Team took a tour of the construction site. The project, due to be completed by the fall of 2024, is adding 28,000 square feet of space, increasing student capacity to just over 2,500. In other news, the Fort Meade Cemetery is the final resting place for 33 German and two Italian prisoners of war from World War II. Every November, German and Italian military attaches come to Fort Meade to remember their fallen countrymen. Thank you very much for allowing us to gather at this site on soil that holds the remains of 33 German and two Italian men who served their country and sadly weren't able to return to their families. They were brought to Fort Meade as prisoners of war and died and have found their final resting place here in the United States. Brigadier General Messina and dear Stefano, we well appreciate very much that our European comrades and arms and friends from Italy are observing this day of mourning together with us. As Americans, we too understand what it means to have your countrymen buried on foreign soils. Another unfortunate outcome of war. Though our flags and uniforms may separate us, we certainly share a common bond, the love of a homeland and the love of our fellow brothers and sisters in arms. Indeed, we cannot deny that today's ceremony is a solemn occasion that draws attention to the conflicts between our nations during World War II. However, it also highlights the unity that exists today. In my own service, whether training in Germany, fighting with the coalition, or keeping peace with NATO and the United Nations, I have only known you and your compatriots as allies, and more precisely, as friends. Elsewhere, with the holiday season upon us, the Combined Federal Campaign, or CFC, gift-giving season is well underway. Here's a message from the CFC and why it matters. The funds raised through the CFC help people and communities in need. Over the years, the CFC has become a federal tradition, and here's how it works. Choose your cause from thousands of vetted charities. Then make your pledge and help change the world. Here are three great reasons to give through the CFC. You can set up automatic payroll deductions. Give to multiple charities at once. And have collective impact. Looking for more reasons to give? It's easy to renew your pledge each year. You can also pledge volunteer hours. Donations are tax deductible. The online giving platform is secure. You can even give through the CFC Giving mobile app. Donate today at givecfc.org. We're going to close this edition in just a moment with a look at this year's annual holiday tree lighting ceremony. But first, a quick reminder to stay tuned for our annual look back on the year that was. It's our annual Me TV Year in Review, and that comes your way on December 16th. Until then, I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Me TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week. <laughs>